there are collaborations and then there is Project X. A never seen before coming together of musical geniuses who lend their expertise and talent to create a trend that is a benchmark in itself. Musician and drummer par excellence Ranjit Barod had the framework of a tune in mind. What happened next with the collaborative efforts of Oscar winner A.R. Rahman? The queen of Hindustani classical music Shabha Mudgal. The king of commercial Bollywood successes Salim Merchant and the musical genius of modern day music Amit Trivedi. A song emerged, one that had the best of all the maestros. Project X is not just another collaboration, it is the collaboration. Project X, an association of four musical maestros, A.R. Rahman, Shobha Mudgal, Amit Trivedi and Salim Marchant, championed by Ranjit Barot, witnessed the creation of a new age music. Individual expertise of all the maestros were pulled in to create a song that served as the theme song of the Mercedes GLC. The music video of this song was launched at the Auto Expo 2016. As a precursor to the launch, the music maestros were invited for a quick fireside chat that brought home the purpose of the association and how it served as the perfect platter for the launch of the GLC. The perfect debut for a debut. Amit, I'm going to ask you first. When I first sort of approached you, I mean, what, what aspect of this collaboration that we've done, what, what, what appealed to you, besides my earrings? <laughs> first of all, I've been a great, great, huge fan of yours, your work. And, and then when you called me and then spoke to me, when Ranjit sir spoke to me about this project, that there'll be uh, uh, collaborations with AR sir, Shubhaji, and Salim is doing something. So I, I was, I'm like the junior most, and I'm, I've, I've been a huge, huge fan of each and every one here. And uh, it was, it was a dream come true for me, honestly. When you called me, like, oh, I have to be a part of this. It's going to be really exciting. I just jumped on it. I had to. <laughs> it's great that this, we got this opportunity to do this with each other. And don't you think that? There should be more opportunities for us to have a dialogue. Absolutely. As absolutely. opposed to it being one-offs. You know, did you feel that this would be something where you could find something about yourself and your music because you're doing it with us that yeah. might be off the beaten path? Yeah. Absolutely, because uh, you, uh, this is oh, it's one of its kind. It's a very unique uh, uh, thing. It's never happened before, like this yeah. kind of collaboration. And when I uh, got the basic tune that you had given me, he basically had this DNA in mind, uh, Jeet sir, and uh, he kind of played it to me very roughly. So that base itself, from the source itself was so beautiful, so amazing. So take it from there and uh, give your expression uh, was something really amazing for me to do because I thought collaborating first of all with these giants and then uh, uh, working on the melody, which is which is already so beautiful, and to take it from there. So I think, yeah, it's a great, it's a great thing, it's a great initiative, and I think we should do this more often. It's fun. It's you know, fun. I have <laughs> your number. I have your number. Uh, I'm going to ask Ar the next question because, so he's achieved so much in in his lifetime, and I think this next question is appropriate for you. Is I know by no way, I know you're also just getting started. He's He's, he's redefining things every day. But having achieved so much, having gone so far, 
What would you say is your definition of winning? What is winning? I think uh, being in music for the past 30 years, playing, composing, producing, working with beautiful people like you, it's about self-refinement. Constantly a questioning, are you worth it? Are people coming, are you, are you wasting people's time? Or are you making it worthwhile for them to hear something? Or for yourself, or for your team? Yeah. And self-refinement is the word for me because that makes you not complacent and, and go Absolutely. one step more and work harder. Because in your life, you, you, kind of, you get old in your mind sometimes. Yeah. Oh, I've done it all. I've, you know, um, I've, I've got old. I should relax now. So this one actually kicks your butt in saying that. No, you can do it. Yep. You, when Ranjit does, you can do it. <laughs> You know, like younger people also teach you, yeah. like Amit's work is inspiring, Subhaji's work is inspiring. Yeah, of course. And um, yeah, they, we have learned from each other. I think the one thing we may have in common is, is that maybe people expected us to be a particular way, but we were very clear about where we wanted to go and how we wanted to do things. Um, I know that you sort of came into your own at a later point in your life, and you've always not fought the system, but I think you've stood and been committed to your vision of how you should be a servant of music. We are all servants of music. And what I'd like to ask you is, what do you feel was that one moment on your journey where things changed, where you knew that you had some control over your destiny and where you knew this is where I want to go. This is how I want to do things. And yeah, it may have been tough, but now I know that I have the will and the energy to see my vision through. You know, I don't come from a family of musicians. So in a sense, the fact that the gift of music is in my life is really something that I have to thank my parents for, who gave me this opportunity to study music. And in fact, this uh, revelation, this realization that uh, music is what I'm committed to actually came from my mother, who after I graduated suddenly turned around to me and said, listen, I know that you're crazy about music and so you don't need to do what everybody else is doing. And this was several decades ago when music was not considered such a wonderful profession for uh, particularly for women. And, um, and she said, no, I'm, I would want to give you this opportunity to study music and to come to a decision about whether or not you want to make a full-time commitment to music. She never asked me to be a performer. She never asked me what, how I would earn a living, but she wanted me to make that full-time commitment to music. And I think that really sort of uh, was a moment of realization for me when I said, heavens, you know, she's actually showed me a direction which I should have known all along that this is what I'm obsessed with, this crazy compulsion, this obsession, this madness about music. This is what life is all about, and I would hate to spend a minute without it. So I think that revelation and realization really was a gift from my mother. Well, he has mentioned self-refinement, but what do you think drives you? Because, you know, I've been listening to you ever since you did your first, you know, I used to watch him do jingles. We used to kind of do that in Bombay. And then after Roja and everything, I have seen the evolution. And I've kind of studied it very, very closely because to try and, I was only a drummer. And to make it in the world of harmony and melody, I had to inform myself. And it was a time where, what was the reference point, really? There was no local reference point. You got records from abroad. They were rock, funk, black music, but contemporary Indian music. And I heard it for the first time from him. So in, in that 
in that world of creativity and composition, what is this element that, because I'm seeing it, I hear your work today, it's, it's, there's still so much for me to steal. Absolutely. I, there's so it's much so, so. treasure. I can keep stealing stuff and it never ends. So what, what is it? What is it that pushes you to have this vision of a newer creative thing that you come up with every so often? I think uh, there's a duality in me. Of course, you're a big part of my music, you know, whether it's Hama Hama, and so many beautiful arrangements you've done and taken it much further. Um, there's a duality. One is your content. Contentness actually gives you happiness. And the other part of you is ambitious. It's got a very high creative ego that, yeah. why can't we do this? Yes. What stops us from uh, <laughs> taking this much further? And is it the money or is it the time or is it age or yeah. is it talent? So put everything together and I think people are worth it. Yeah. What if I were to buy my CDs, would I go and pick up, would I go and download it on iTunes or any downloading site? So that question actually fuels me. Would I go it or will I feel bored about this? This name is boring for me. <laughs> I don't want to go. Or will I be excited? No. He's, he would have done his best or he would have. So I go to the consumer point of thing and and then look at myself from there. Amazing. And that's, that's amazing. But apart from that also, I see another aspect of your life where, and this is something I believe very strongly in, is, you know, does it matter to you that you are also a role model? You know, people look up to you. And that's the scary part. I don't want to live up to that. <laughs> yeah, you know. So does it affect the choices you make or sometimes does it, you know? I am could influence me, but not that much. I'm more to my conscience about my spirituality and which dictates what I'm doing and in the eyes of the Almighty. So I'm constantly being watched, what I'm doing in secret or in-, in As kind of, we are all, absolutely. All of us are that same thing. So absolutely. even in music, it's the same time. Yes. The yes. question is, why didn't you work harder? Why didn't you make it better? Yeah. At least you could have tried. Yeah. And that question comes yeah. into us. Yeah. Wonderful. But for you, I mean, um, being in um, this amazing place that you are right now as a composer, and please don't ever refer to the film industry as Bollywood. You know, that's like a big no-no. It's just the Indian film industry, that's all, you know. Uh, and he's a big part of it. Um, do, you, do you find the need or the drive that when you hear other young singers or performers or composers, that you feel the need to empower them? Do you feel the need that, hey, listen, you know, I'm experiencing something beautiful and I would really wish for you to experience this magic? It's like uh, you kind of, I just a few minutes back, sir, showed me a clip of a small young kid playing, yeah, Chopin, and then the, the way he was playing, it, it was amazing. It just blew my mind off. A young small boy must be 10, 12 years old. So I keep, uh, this is, uh, it's a constant greed for me to find a new, such amazing people who have spark yes. in them, who yes. have uh, uh, something really powerful in them. And that really, I get to learn so much because you are constantly learning. So yeah. it's like give and take. And that, yeah. that uh, I always love doing that and collaborating with people like that. And it, teaches me a lot, I learn a lot. So, Shubhaji, um, are you content with the music? Are you, is there some unrest? Is there, what would you like to see change? What would you like, what, what sort of climate or musical situation do you think that you would like to instigate or be part of? Well, you know, I think the one thing that I've learned being an Indian is that diversity and plurality in every aspect of life is such a valuable treasure that uh, Indians must really explore, and, and they do invariably. 
Um, I think there are a couple of things that I'd like to say. One is the climate really between your two ears. Yes. And that climate must remain yes. always, you know, come whether it, there's stormy weather outside or whether no there's... turbulence. Yeah, well, you just have to... That weather must remain constant, that need to be connected and involved with music in some way or the other. At some point of time, we all realize that, you know, the years are going by faster than we thought that they would. But analyzing your work brutally and uh, not le really letting, I mean, even when everybody else is applauding, the need to question what you're doing, the need yes. to find your voice yes. again. This is, is what I meant, yeah. not to be content. Yeah. where you are, yes. but to find a place where you're going to step beyond what you've already done and what you think is possible. Wonderful. Yes, yes. And, okay, let's end with, uh, and this is for each one of you, what do you feel would be the next evolution of you? What do you see yourself as the next sort of big moment or the big musical contribution that you feel you can bring to the world after bringing so much already? Life is a cycle, like even knowledge is a cycle. And we've started, we learned so much from so many gurus, from the greats, from the people on the street, folk singers, classical singers, Western Indian. And uh, so we have to appreciate people who have facilitated knowledge to us. Yes. And we have to do the same thing. Absolutely. So, um, so my next happened five years back. I started the KM yes. Music College of Conservatory. Yes. And whenever I felt low in life, I would go just sit there and watch these kids. And I didn't have a piano. I couldn't afford a piano. And so we bought around nine pianos, grand pianos, in the school. And you see all the little kids from villages who can't even spell Chopin or Mozart. Yes playing that yes. music. And uh, so that's a, a very important redeeming. step in your evolution. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've, I'm always fascinated by technology, and I, I'm always, you know, thrilled by what it can do. I'll send you all my computers to, yeah. to handle. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so the two projects that I'm really, really keen on and I hope I can work on, which have started to some extent, one is an online encyclopedia of Indian music, which I hope in the years to come will flourish and be nurtured and supported. Is it online already or you're working on it? The interface is, uh, is ready. Fantastic. But, uh, but of course, Fantastic. it's a big project. And the other is a music mapping project where I hope to start with Delhi, uh, with friends and collaborators who perhaps would be able to map. Because if you don't know how many professional musicians live in a city, how can you hope to have a welfare scheme for them? Absolutely. How can you hope to... In in, you know, get any information about them. So I hope that with my young friends, uh, of whom I have many, um, um, helped by them, um, this aging musician will be able to achieve those it's digital funny, dreams. It's funny, no, even my friends are getting younger and younger. <laughs> yes. I have many young friends now, yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. Amit. I've, I feel um, music is like a, like a big, huge ocean. The deeper you go, you, you kind of, you're evolving, you're exploring things each day. And I'm just young, I'm just new at new to this. As I said, I'm the junior most. I have yet a lot, I have done, I have, I have a lot to, more to do. And uh, uh, I'm, each day, the process of making music, that itself is so exciting for com making, com composing or creating music for a film or for whatever you're doing, whatever aspect. That kind of keeps you going and, uh, and, and it's every day you're learning, and that, of course, it's part of evolution. Wonderful. Well, I wish all of you blessings and love and all the luck to realize all the dreams and 
passion because as artists, when you sing, write, compose, you give of yourself to people. So please, thank you, Ayar, Shubha, Amit. Thank you, so much. thank you for sharing and for being who you are. Thank you all. Uh, I would like to welcome, at this point, since we've concluded this chat, uh, Mr. Roland Folger, MD and CEO, Mercedes-Benz India, to come and share the stage with us for a little bit. Firstly, thank you for collaborating with us, um, with us and Kyunki, to bring Project X to reality, because it was just something that I really wanted to do with friends and colleagues, start something which we could have a dialogue outside of our professional world. So thank you for validating that and allowing it to get to people. I want to thank Samir of Kyoki and the rest of his team, because without them and your dialogue, we wouldn't be here, really. So um, I have to ask you that going by your hashtag, best keep winning, can you throw some light on what stand Mercedes-Benz has on this term, on winning. What is your stand on that? Thanks a lot. Well, first of all, thanks a lot for making this cooperation and collaboration happen. The Winner's Way is a unique initiative, and at the outset, I would like to congratulate you, Ranjin Bharat, for taking up such a unique project. It's been a real pleasure. It's been amazing for me because uh, I want to do more of this. I want to play with all of them. I want to, I'm blessed I play with him. I get to play his music. He's very forgiving. I, I mailed him once. I said, please forgive me if some of my arrangements, because as a composer, he's the unique trust. You know, you have to trust somebody that, and I, I am always very respectful, you know, of, because his songs, I have to try not to mess them up. They're already very nice. I don't have to do anything. So I got to find ways of, uh, so it was a dream, dream for me. To it's be very, very them. positive to hear that, that we could contribute something to this as well. So thanks for giving us the chance. Thank you. Thank you very much. I must point out at this point that the other gentleman who couldn't make it, he's terribly unwell, Salim Merchant. He's a fine composer, a very good friend, and a very big part of this song. So, he's, uh, he was missed, but we'll, we'll send him photographs and, you know, make sure he doesn't miss too much. Thank you all very much. Thank you. और जिया से जिया मिला ले तो खुशनुमा हो जाए